All right. Well, here's a few news articles. Um, the Windows-oriented administrators are pretty excited about this. Uh, Microsoft is now letting you patch Windows without restarting it. And I saw a comment, I don't know if it's true, that you can even patch it without restarting an individual process, which is what you have to do on Linux. But it's only for a very specific kind of Windows, something called Azure Auto Manage, which makes it sound like it's only going to work for core virtual machines on Azure. So that's a start, but it has not come to the, the most common kind of Windows. Anyway, that's an interesting uh, option. I know one big irritation for decades with Windows is they keep having to restart it when you put on a patch, and this often means that uh, servers are left unpatched for a long period of time. Uh, Deviant Alum, who is a real cybersecurity celebrity, a very fine guy, teaches lock picking and does lots of good things, um, he pointed me to this letter which is a letter to stop the mass surveillance and anti-encryption bills. There's a thing called the Earn It Act, which seems to be just another of the endless attempts of the government to outlaw encryption. So there's a very nice, well-written letter here, and uh, I added my name to it, and anybody that wants to sign it you know, can do so. I'll put the link in the chat, and it's in my news uh, links. If you want to sign this thing like a petition, um, that would be a good thing to do. If you agree with this... Uh, this feeling that we should not outlaw encryption, uh, which is what the government keeps trying to do on the grounds that it would make us safer because they could catch the pedophiles, but it probably would make everybody unsafe because now all kinds of criminals could steal your stuff. We've been going around decades for this, the, uh, the crypto wars, they call it. So there is a uh, fuzzer for the Linux kernel, which is apparently new. Yeah, well, the USA Patriot Act, yes, the USA Patriot Act did some similar things, but it didn't actually outlaw encryption. Um, this one would, apparently, force everyone to put a backdoor in. Do I need, no, I don't think you need edit access. You go to the bottom and there's a link, and you can click on that and a you know, page thing opens. And let me bring it back up because actually that part was pretty confusing to me. So I should show you that. Okay, so there's this thing. And to sign it, you just need to click this thing. So you can read it here, and if you want to sign it, you click that, and then you click this. And then it will open some kind of uh, form that will let you sign it, or so I thought. Okay, copied the link, right? You copied the link, and now you paste it in a new tab. That's what you do. It's a little funny. Not as easy as it ought to be. But anyway, that's what you do. You copy the link and put it here. And then you'll have an opportunity to sign it. Yeah, I found that a little clumsy. Call your congressman and she'll have much more weight. That's absolutely true. That would be a good thing to do, too. So there's some kind of fuzzer for the Linux kernel. SYZ caller and SYZ bot, and apparently it's extremely effective, and they found over 3,000 bugs and fixed them. So it sounds great. Uh, I didn't find any like explanation in readable English here, just the code and such, but anyway, it's uh, it seems like a significant advantage in security, and maybe that can be expanded to more products. Google increased the bounty on their Kubernetes offerings, and one thing I didn't know about is they have a CTF offering, a Kubernetes-based infrastructure for CTF competitions, which is essentially what the Web Security Academy we're using is, something that will spin up a container so you can hack on that little one machine, which is you know a lot better than the normal CTF, where you just have a Jeopardy-type um, question, where you actually have your own little in the, uh, personal machine to hack into. So it sounds really great. And they say it's very easy, so uh, I haven't tried it yet, but it sounds like a good thing to try this KCTF thing to make a uh, your own training product like the uh, like the um, Web Security Academy. All right, I'll put the link in here. All right. Anyway, this is a very interesting story about um, Toy Story. 
I heard about this from actually a data recovery company, but they accidentally deleted everything in Toy Story. And they said, what's going on is you had like 500 animators working on it. And every one of them had read write access to all the folders because you had to, because all the files are scattered all over the place. But somebody did RM minus RF star in the root and started deleting the whole thing. And they got like 90% of it deleted before they noticed it and stopped it. So they tried to pee the backups, it turned out, had not been working and they had not been testing them properly. So they had enormous trouble recovering the movie. They finally found um, somebody who'd been working from home that had a personal copy a few weeks old. They were able to recover most of it. So after heroic efforts, they recovered it. And then they looked at it and said, this just isn't a very good movie. So they threw it away and just redid the whole thing anyway, just for artistic reasons. But anyway, it's a very interesting story about technology and also um, uh, the creativity and the high standards of Pixar, which really is amazing. Pixar has more hits than almost any other producer of movies, I think. Uh, the only competitor I can imagine is perhaps the Marvel Comics Universe movies, but they have an awful lot of top hit movies, of Toy Story 2 being one of them. So they really have a high dedication to quality. Anyway, um, this is pretty interesting. A Texas representative got raided by the FBI, and I think I heard about this, and I think he's, yeah, he's a Democratic. A Democratic um, representative in Texas, and I think I heard about him being raided, and as far as I know, the reason he was raided has never come out. But apparently, somebody has created a troll farm to fix his reputation. And the most obvious thing to me is that he just bought a troll farm. You'll see these links in my Twitch every time I run. The bot pops up. Would you like to buy some Twitch followers? There's a bunch of people and it's all social, um, all social media that will make bots to make you seem like you have more followers. And it's something Donald Trump did to a vast extent. When Donald Trump was on Twitter. He had a ton of followers and most of them were bots. Of course, you don't know that he paid for them. It could be his uh, people that supported him also set up bots or paid for bots. But anyway, uh, this guy has paid for bots which put friendly comments on all of his tweets and say great things and support him and everything he says. And by uh, the various researchers that do this, we're able to see that all these bots have similar names. Their profile pics are just copied and slightly modified from other people's profiles. The, all their uh, accounts were created in the last month or two. And they even found a bunch of them that a few months ago were being used for Spanish um, trolling for someone else, and now they've repurposed them for here. So it's these coordinated inauthentic activity, which is a lot of what Twitter tried to stop. Have I ever tried a pie hole? Um, yes, I haven't tried it, but I know Irvin has. It's a pretty common thing people do, is take the Raspberry Pi and make a pie hole, um, which is just one of the many sort of uh, secure security devices to put on the edge of your network. Um, it's a perfectly fine thing to do and you learn a lot, but I haven't tried it. I know where it has. Um, another way to black ads and such. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's interesting how they identify that bot traffic. And it is sort of interesting that uh, well, I have so many ads, I hardly notice them. I don't get very many ads in Brave. It's not enough to irritate me. Anyway, um, so there's a uh, doctor that posts a lot of tweets on Twitter and he a lot of uh, like the CDC like most authorities he's very upset that we're opening up getting rid of masks and all that and a lot of people think the kids really shouldn't be in school certainly not without masks and they're saying the Omicron wave does have much higher hospitalization rates for children Omicron is more dangerous for children the risk is still very low only a very small number of children go to the hospital but it is much more than it was with the earlier waves and, you know, all over California, supposedly, you don't need to wear masks anymore. And uh, although when I went to a coffee house today, everybody was wearing masks in there. But, uh, yeah, your landlord will kick you out if you mess with the router. Well, if you make a pie hole, you can make it on just your little part of the network. Uh, you don't have to. Yeah, Omicron certainly spreads more easily, and it seems to affect children more. That's the uh, finding of this article. Oh, and I see it's already 11 after, so I think I'll just skip the rest of the news and move on to the official stuff. Next